I'd like to take a quick trip down memory lane. Who here was here for JNOC 2018? For those of you who were here, um, you may remember the SAP IT services team introducing their new Apple Center of Excellence initiative. Uh, this initiative uniquely pulled apart the traditional IT concept of really managing uh, mobility and endpoints in separate teams, and instead smashing it all together to create a management ecosystem uh, that had discrete teams, tools, strategies, and processes. At the beginning of this journey, the SAP IT services team had to enroll 17,000 Macs into Jamf Pro and migrate 83,000 iOS devices from their on-premise MDM solution into Jamf Pro, with a primary consideration being that most of these devices were already deployed in the field. Sounds really easy, right? No big deal. Well, the project has continued on since then. And to tell us more about how that journey has gone in the last year, including what's next, I'd like to welcome to the stage VP IT Services Enterprise Mobility at SAP, Martin Lang. Thank you, Josh. Hey, hey, Martin. Great Thanks to be for here. joining us today. Yeah. Awesome. So it's been a year now, and uh, your team has certainly been busy. You told us that you were building an Apple at SAP Center of Excellence, managing 17,000 Macs, 83,000 iOS devices, and 170 Apple TVs, all as one ecosystem. But a huge part of that initiative was actually moving all of those devices over into being managed with Jamf Pro. Can you tell us a little bit more about how that process has gone in the last year? Sure, I'd be happy to. So you might remember, if you've been here or if you watched it online last year, the demo of Julia, who was a new hire, and I gave her her corporate phone here on stage, and she enrolled it into our production system, right? And you've seen the whole process uh, from taking it out of the box, fresh iPhone, until she was fully productive, not just with mail and calendar and contacts, but also apps and certificates on the device and everything. We were at the time uh, live with Jamf Pro and in the Jamf Cloud for our new devices, uh, and we're enrolling them with automated MDM enrollment, and that was going super well, but we had not started this migration. Uh, we still had these 80 some thousand devices back in our old MDM happened to be our own SAP uh, internal solution um, that was since retired. And uh, we still had to migrate those devices. And as you said, those devices were fully deployed, so all over the globe uh, uh, in people's hands, and they needed to be productive. Uh, so we started, we, we were working on migration tools to make this really simple so that everybody could do this themselves without needing our help or our IT colleagues' help in the field. And, um, and by February, we were ready to kick off the migration. Uh, and it took us six months for everybody to essentially press the button, literally actually press a button uh, that said migrate to Jamf and get their device uh, uh, migrated to Jamf Pro uh, with remaining fully uh, productive. All the apps that were previously installed uh, came back on those devices. And we were done, like I said, by end of July and uh, August we shut down the old system. We, we've been quite happy with this, uh, so happy in fact that uh, we actually decided along the way to move our Macs into the Jamf cloud as well. Um, they are currently on a Jamf Pro on-premise system. That's awesome. So yeah, you, you've been busy, certainly, but you migrated an incredible amount of devices over to Jamf Pro, and you really had the user drive that task. I'm curious if you can tell me a little bit more about the nuance of that. What hurdles did you have to jump over, and, uh, and how did that process go? Yeah, it, it is um, quite unique when you have <clears throat> a lot of mobile apps, and we do. We've kind of started, I told you that story last year, started as a mobile app development team, and then only later kind of acquired also the MDM functions as part of our team. And when you have a lot of apps on the device, in-house apps that is, that are not from the App Store and no VPP, right? And it's actually challenging to migrate from an old MDM, from some MDM, really doesn't matter which one, into uh, Jamf. Uh, but the process, and you actually see this playing in the background now, it actually going to uh, repeat playing um, uh, the video. You kind of see this uh, here, how we did this. It really was a button that was called Migrate to Jamf. And technically, uh, without going into too much detail, we kind of saved the apps that people had previously installed in the keychain, because the keychain remains intact, even if you do an unenroll and a re-enroll. Uh, then uh, uh, had people uh, go over to the enrollment page. The tool facilitated that. Uh, they enrolled in the new MDM. Um, we pushed 
an app called Apple at SAP. You saw that app last year. It uses the GEMP certificate SDK to pull down single sign-on, but it also looked in the keychain which apps were previously installed and pushed them right back on the device. So literally in less than five minutes, uh, depending on Wi-Fi, which uh, is uh, kind of important, <laughs> right? uh, in a, on a good Wi-Fi situation, uh, really super fast, uh, everything was migrated, uh, which is really a, quite a technical undertaking, uh, but our end users were all able to do this themselves. And at, at any given time, how many people were migrating you know, during a day? Yeah, I mean, you can imagine 80,000 in six months. So on, on some days, we had way more than 1,000 people migrate their devices. I was actually monitoring those numbers on a daily basis, looked at the smart group on devices enrolled in the last 24 hours. And it, sometimes it was 1,000 or 2,000 even I saw uh, with very few tickets that came in. Uh, very, like, we really only heard of maybe 10 support cases uh, that people opened up or walk IT link center walk-ins. We call IT link centers these support desks uh, around the world. Uh, very few issues. Most users had been able to do this themselves, which we were super happy with. That's amazing. So they migrated all these devices, and they were going from an on-premise MDM tool into <coughs> Jamf Cloud. Tell us a little bit about how that migration into Jamf Cloud has gone and what your experience has been. Yeah, so we at SAP, we, we embrace the cloud. You know, we are the largest enterprise application software company in the world, and a lot of our products are also cloud-based uh, nowadays, so we have no problem with the cloud. And uh, with the iOS, we had the Max on-premise, as I said, on a Jamf Pro on-premise instance, but with the iOS devices, we decided from the start, we'll try this in the Jamf cloud. We had, of course, you know, when you talk to Jamf and you say, I have 80,000 iOS devices, then um, they also, uh, you know, uh, this is not so usual yet, uh, but, uh, but scale was no problem, you know, from the first uh, 1,000 devices to the first 20,000 to now 85,000 or so, um, uh, the system uh, went super smooth. And we managed really um, with uh, this cloud implementation uh, to make the process for our users uh, even easier from, like I said, the taking the device out of the box uh, to being fully productive um, with everything. Um, we love it. That's awesome. We love that, too. You mentioned that this process really uh, forced you to change the mindset of how your IT team works historically, uh, focused on successfully deploying devices within an organization to a spec. And now you're much more focused as a team on the user and productivity and efficiency. How has that change of mentality played out for your team? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think when, when you have a situation where a lot of things on setting up an iOS device uh, for work are cumbersome, when uh, you need to go through manuals on how to configure certain apps, and when users get uh, log-on screens and credential screens to log on to things, things, there's a lot of friction. And then it's tough to really have a discussion about how can I make you more valuable in your role, right? How can I make you as a salesperson a better salesperson in your role? But now we have basically all this friction removed. We really you saw this last year already in the demo, and that's still the case to enroll a device. You really only enter your password once. Everything else is certificate-based and single sign-on. Uh, all the apps, and we do a lot of them, uh, everything is a single sign-on. So now we can really have those discussions, and in my team as well, especially on the app development side, on how can we make that salesperson more productive with an iPhone and an iPad and a Mac, and how can we make an HR person more productive? And we go more and more into these business conversations on how IT can be more strategically uh, relevant and, and less being in the business of really getting the device up and running because that just goes like this. And, uh, and now we can uh, get real value on those devices. That's a pretty transformational concept. Uh, you mentioned apps were a big part of that, right? So mm -hmm. uh, last year, you alluded to it. We obviously know that SAP is an amazing uh, app creator. Um, your team and the greater SAP app team has spent time building a lot of native iOS and macOS apps for not only the end users, but the IT teams to enhance workflows. Tell us a little bit about the types of people that are using apps and how you make them available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we started uh, as an app development team, and we started to build apps for our salespeople because those folks are on the road, uh, right? As you can imagine, all the time with our customers. Um, also, they are, have customer face time, right? So we want them to have the most modern tools. So that's who we started with. And you see behind you now uh, uh, self-service and the sell category. This is how salespeople would find the apps that are relevant to them. You also see they follow, for the most part, a certain iconography, if that is a word. 
I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, they are all, we call this SAP Gold, this color. You can call it whatever you like. Uh, but uh, we also have a get started category, you know. So, and we, we since branched out to build apps for other roles uh, in SAP as well, you know, uh, apps for managers. Um, apps for finance people, um, for CFOs, uh, to see how we can help uh, them. Uh, on the Mac, I believe a similar thing will happen with Catalyst, um, and, and we actually are already working on bringing some of our iPad apps, uh, iPhone, iPad apps, our iOS apps over to uh, the Mac. Uh, this is going to happen. SAP has this partnership with Apple that many of you might have heard about also of bringing these new user experiences uh, to people that use SAP systems as their financial and sales and so forth systems. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. So let's actually, let's take a trip over here to the demo station. Sure. You've mentioned that you have a unique way to be able to look into the world of who's using applications at what time. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that whole concept. Um, Yes, absolutely. So, so we have actually a pretty a cool, uh, let's call it a dashboard. Um, you, uh, yeah, so this is, uh, I'm not kidding, it's not a demo, it's not a video, this is a real-time visualization of apps being used at this moment in time by SAP employees. Right, so not by our customers. We wouldn't, of course, be allowed to track this. But I am IT, uh, so I am allowed to track it for my our SAP employees. We don't track usernames, of course, because that would be an inclusion, an intrusion of privacy, also. But we do. We are allowed to track it by country. And you see, this is very busy. Uh, it's actually very busy. Whenever you look at it, uh, you see apps being used in various countries on the top and on the bottom. You see kind of what type of apps uh, these are. But our SAP people use a lot of apps, and this is important for us, you know, even down to our developers, it's actually very rewarding for them to see the things that they work on being used. Um, so we look at this quite a bit. <clears throat> Every ping that you see here also goes into a database, a HANA database from SAP, and we can report on this on a monthly or quarterly basis and so forth and see which apps are really top used and which apps are little used. We do get from Jamfro also installation statistics, right, from the inventory, but this goes far beyond that because it talks about actual usage. Yeah, it gives you a really yeah. unique window into where to spend your time developing, where to update apps, and who to invest in. Right, That's right. pretty great. So if I'm finding apps as an employee through self-service, and I kind of already know what exists, how is it that I go about discovering apps that might be new? Tell me a yeah. little bit about so that. So I, I believe, like, you know, marketing and promotion uh, for cool stuff that IT people do is actually a bit underrated, uh, I think. In, in our team, we try to change that paradigm and do a, a whole bunch of marketing for our stuff, because if we develop the greatest app and nobody knows about it in SAP, I'm not going to see the bubbles, uh, yeah. right? And, and it's not going to be cool. So there is many ways uh, uh, how apps can be promoted, and actually Jamf uh, helps us with some of that, too. Uh, so I brought an example with me. Yeah, we have a slide here. We, we can, can show that we example. We can switch to that slide, which, which contains, which has a poster on it. You see this poster, SAP Today, uh, that promotes an app that can be used to display the lunch menu, which for SAP people is always very important. Uh, <laughs> What's, what's for lunch. The, the app actually does a whole bunch of other things as well, but, but it also does lunch. And I didn't even know about this poster. I walked into our cafeteria just the, uh, last week and saw this and thought, this is quite amazing. You might not be able to read it, but at the bottom it says scan to install. And we changed that QR code so that you don't get our lunch menu. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you, you'll get the JNAC app. But, uh, but uh, I, I, gave, I gave Josh here on his iPad the QR code, and I just want to show you how simple this is, you know, the scan to install. So I, if we switch back to my iPhone, here, there you go. I would just open the camera, right? All of you have done this before to scan a QR code, and I'll scan this QR code. It says open it self-service from the top. I click this once, <clears throat> self-service thinks about it for just a moment, and it says app installation is in progress. I don't have to do anything else. And if I go back to the home screen, I'll see the SAP Today app installing right now, right? Basically, no uh, other interaction required other than scanning the QR code. I want to do some Joel sounds. Ooh. So Martin, yes. Mar Martin is officially announcing that no SAP employee ever has to be out left out of lunch again. Yes. That's, a big, that's a big revelation. Well, that's cool. So um, I'm curious, though. You had mentioned that um, you have this IT app as well. So maybe you can uh, give me an idea about what that's all about. 
Yeah, so IT is, of course, uh, in SAP, IT is about 3,000 people. So it's also a line of business to us, right? Uh, just like salespeople and HR people and so forth. So we want to also make IT people more productive. Uh, we, my team is uh, relatively small, uh, but we work with our large field IT organization to support all of our 70-some thousand uh, users, right? SAP is 99,000, but 75,000 of them have at least one Apple device. Uh, so uh, we built an app that we call iOS Assist that helps IT people to provide a better and more personal support uh, to end users who come to them with an Apple device and have a problem. So it's, it's not just end users who are enjoying this app experience, but uh, I'm curious now, throughout all of this, then you have end user apps, you have IT apps, you've migrated all these devices, you've shifted in focus with your group. How many devices are you actually managing today at SAP? Yeah, so I get that question a ton. And uh, actually, we built a bit, little bit of a functionality into this iOS Assist app, and I'm going to show you how this works. Um, I'm go just going to ask my phone how many devices we have. Right? How many devices do we manage? And, uh, let's... SAP manages 84,731 iOS devices right now. So... That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. That is pretty cool. Yeah. So, so this, what this, exactly was just happening there? Yeah, so this is, as you uh, can probably imagine, this is a Siri shortcut uh, that we built into the iOS Assist app uh, that, in essence, uh, does a Jamfro call, uh, Jamfro API call, okay. uh, and gets back that number. So it comes back in real time. You saw how fast this was. It, I think it said just a sec, but then it came in. Yep. Uh, and I'm not using your Wi-Fi. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but... Uh, but, but, uh, but uh, um, yeah, it's, it's just a Jamfro API call to bring back that number. Huh? Very cool. Would you mind taking us to a quick demo of the iOS Assist app while you're at it? No, I wouldn't mind at all. Awesome. Um, so let's, let's go into iOS Assist. Oh, I'm actually already here. Let's, the, the Analytics tab is a tab that we added that actually every SAP employee can uh, actually uh, install this app. This has no authentication yet. No Jamfro uh, privilege is required yet to display those numbers. Every SAP employee uh, is happy, can see those numbers. You know, you see the total number of managed iOS devices right now. Eventually, as we talked earlier, this will include the Macs, but today they are on a different instance, and right now this is just for the cloud instance, and so just for the iOS devices. You see the breakdown, which some of you might find interesting on how many supervised devices we have, how many unsupervised. The supervised generally are all the new ones we bought since last year, right? This is one year worth of purchases uh, of iPhones. Uh, the unsupervised are the ones that were all migrated from our old MDM. So that number is currently still going down as people switch to new devices, and you see the breakdown by iPhone, iPad, and also Apple TVs. But then, and where it gets really to IT support, I have this app tab, and it actually lets me favorite some devices. I favorited Rich, Rich's and, uh, and <laughs> Philip's device. Uh, just if they have some problem, you know, I could uh, directly, quickly uh, go to their device, but I'm not going to do that right now because that would also be an intrusion of privacy to show you their data. I happen to be an admin, obviously, uh, privileges-wise on this jam, for instance, to see this, but I'm searching for a device called JNUC, and this happens to be this demo device that I have in my hand right now, and if I go into it, you know, I see a bunch of metadata the serial number, and I can also copy and paste it, because sometimes in a support case I might need to throw that serial number uh, somewhere else, but I see the last inventory, obviously the iOS version. All these things can be very handy in a support situation, and it enables our support people you know, to help uh, SAP employees in a conversation, just like we are having right now. If you had an issue, yeah. I could help you. I wouldn't have to turn my back and log on to Jam Pro on a computer. Uh, I can help you directly. I see the single sign-on certificate expiration date, and, and and more fields. Uh, I have all the management, oops, all the management options available to me that uh, Jamfro allows me to execute on this device. Um, these are, of course, quite a few because this happens to be a supervised device. Maybe most important for support purposes, I see the log history of this device, so I can go in there and see all the recent uh, commands that Jamf issued uh, to this device, including a pending installed app list, which came just from installing the SAP Today app. So the update to the inventory is still pending, but um, who cares? I could flush it. You see the flush button if I wanted to. So this um, is really helpful, like I said, in support cases. I think I'll conclude the demo with rebooting this device, um, issuing that command. So you see that this is really real life. It says the command was issued, and my phone is rebooting. You'll see the Apple logo in a second. That's yeah. very cool. So
So if that, if that wasn't enough to cover, uh, I just want to ask you very briefly about what's next. What is your team thinking about beyond this migration? <coughs> yeah, so uh, there's always lots of uh, ideas you know, in SAP of, things, uh, of other things we can do. We think right now that we want to expand quite a bit more on our Apple TV story. We have 250 Apple TVs. If you looked at the number right now that are managed, this is a relatively low number, especially compared to the number of screens we have in SAP offices all over the world. Screens in coffee corners and in lobbies and in offices of managers and, and everywhere. And I want to uh, power those. We already have those 250, and we built five apps already. Uh, but I want to expand on this. The team wants to expand on this. You know, we know how to build apps. Um, we obviously, I mentioned this before, we are currently working on getting our Macs into the Jamf cloud. Um, uh, this, this should be exciting. So we, don't, we have to do less server maintenance uh, on the on-premise system. And Jamf can handle this for us. And we have 80,000 devices in there already. So another 25,000 uh, shouldn't be a big deal. Um, and, and lastly, we, we also work actually on an analytics uh, framework. SAP happens to be an analytics company as well. And we have our own SAP analytics cloud solution. And so we are actually currently connecting our Jamf Pro environment and are working with Jamf for this two hour SAP Analytics Cloud to, you know, we, we want, and as I'm sure many of you, and the Power BI option is probably also a very good option for this, but to get historical data um, out of this, uh, to also compare some Jamf data with employee data, which roles, top, top 10 apps by role, right, uh, and things of that nature. Yep. Uh, so this is also going to be super cool. Well, it sounds like you're going to be busy for quite some time. I'm blown away by how transformational this story is. This is a team who's changed their entire mentality in the span of a year and then migrated almost 100,000 devices while doing it. Thank you so much for joining us on the JNOC stage today, and we'll Very look welcome. forward to hearing from you again in the future. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Martin.